Are you ready, Sahela? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. So welcome back, everyone. Um, we're very happy to have Sahela Faizpaksh from Imperial College London, who's going to tell us about curve counting and estuality. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's my pleasure to speak at this conference. Um, I'm going to speak about curve counting and stuality, which is uh, one part of an ongoing project with Richard Thomas at Imperial College. I will first fix my setup and explain what, what, are, what are the varieties that I'm going to work on them, and then talk about the main result about curve counting and astrology, which is written in the recent paper uh, with Richard Thomas. To prove the result, we have used the notion of uh, weak virtual and stability conditions and wall crossing with respect to them. Um, that's why I quickly recall what is this notion and uh, what is wall crossing with respect to weak stability conditions. And uh, finally, I will talk a bit about the sketch uh, about about idea of how we can apply weak stability conditions uh, to prove the main result. And if time allows, uh, we'll talk about modularity uh, from, um, from the viewpoint of uh, astrology in physics. Okay. So let X01 be a smooth, sporized, complex, projective trifold. Uh, and H be just the C1 of O1, though we do not require H to be effective. I'm going to always assume that the conjectural bogomol of Gisikar inequality of Bayer, Macri, and Toda holds for big semi stable objects in the bounded derived category of coherent sheaves on X. I will explain shortly what is this conjecture in full details. We know that this conjecture is ho holds for many trifolds, such as P3 or quintic trifolds. Okay, now fix a cohomology class beta in the image of this uh, integral cohomology h bar x, 0, xz, and uh, an integer number m. And uh, consider the chain character v, 1, 0, minus beta, minus uh, m on, on the trifold x. Okay. Then I'm considering the, mo uh, the modular space I am x beta, which is just the Hilbert scheme of sub schemes of dimension less than one, such that the topological type of this sub scheme is beta and the Euler characteristic of its structure sheaf is m. That's why the modular space of stable sheaves of character v, which is one zero minus beta minus m, is the product of uh, I am x beta and pick zero of x. So that pick zero of x just consists of uh, line bundles with torsion c bar. Okay, so here the notion of stability does not really matter because they all con just consist of torsion free sheaves of this class one zero minus beta minus m. The second moduli space that I'm going to consider is moduli of joy sign pairs, which is just a pair of a torsion free sheaf of class B, which is just lies in the moduli space that I explained above, and S is just a non zero section of, uh, from twisting of OX to this torsion free sheaf. Okay, so now um, if I just uh, look at this non-zero map, since these two sheaves are both torsion free, this map must be injective. That's why we can look at this co-kernel. And for a generic section, this co-kernel is it's just a rank one sheaf on a divisor. That's why it's a stable two-dimensional torsion sheaf and uh, of chain character Vn. The chain character Vn is super special. It's like zero in H minus beta minus N square H square over two and minus M plus N, N cube H cube over six. And the third moduli space that I want to consider is just the moduli of H G seeker semi-stable two dimensional sheaves of character Vn. The main result that I'm going to explain today is that these three moduli space, I am X beta, J S N of V and M X H of V N all carry the same information. So the main theorem that we proved in joint work with Richard is uh, as follows. So just fix a, uh, 
integral cohomology beta in H4, uh, in the image of H4xz to H4xq and let m be an integer number and choose n sufficiently large. We can make this n, this bound here to be effective, but it's quite numeric. That's why I omit this numerical part from here. So I choose n large enough and suppose that the conjectural bogomol of this Ukrainian inequality of Bayer, Macri, and Toda holds on x. Then for any shift of chain character Vn that I've described above, the notion of Giesecker and slope stability and semi-stability all coincide. So if a shift of character Vn is slope stable, then it is a slope semi-stable, then it is also slope strictly slope stable. The second point is that this moduli of joy sung pairs is a projective bundle over the moduli space of torsion free shifts on X. And the key result is that is the following. If I take a pair, you know, if take of a joy sung pair, um, a, a torsion free shift of character V and a non-zero section S and a line bundle L uh, with torsion C1, then I can look at its co-kernel and tensor it with this line bundle. The first claim is that this map is always well-defined. In other words, the co-kernel of this joy sign pair is always a slope semi-stable. And the main point is that this is actually an isomorphism. So any slope semi-stable sheaf of character Vn can be just written as the, and can be written uniquely as the co-kernel of the joy sign pair tensoring with a line bundle with torsion C1. You know, the surprising point that you probably notice is that this, this implies that any slope semi-stable shift of character Vn, uh, when n is very large, must, be, uh, must, be, must have rank one on its support. So all other shifts that you can imagine of them of character Vn are necessarily on a sale. Okay. So now I want to discuss about the immediate result, uh, immediate corollary of this result in curve counting. So let's start with a clavier trifold, but the clavier trifold, I mean just the canonical bundle is trivial and each one of the structure she vanishes. Since all the above three modular space that I've described in them, semi-stability and stability coincide. All of them have symmetric obstruction theory and the virtual cycle is of dimension zero. That's why we can just consider their degree. The first one is that I denote by I am beta of X just counts idle shift of curves and points of character beta and M, which is by MNOP conjecture is equivalent to a Gramovitian invariant. The second one counts joy song pair of character beta and M, and finally the third one counts D4, D2, D0 brain, or two-dimensional torsion shifts, a stable torsion shifts of character Vn, which I denoted by omega Vn of x, and it is subject to the famous uh, duality conjecture in physics, which hopefully I will, uh, I will have time to explain it at the end. Okay, so the, 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 uh, the, Immediate glory of the theorem that I've explained is, is the following. So if I fix beta and m as above and choose n very large, then omega v n of x is just the product of n n and I, I am beta of x, where n n is just the product of this factor and square of the number of torsion elements in this integral cohomology. Okay. If there is no question, then I want to uh, now look at uh, briefly at the notion of weak stability conditions uh, and explain a little bit about what is the idea behind it. So we start with a, a coherent sheaf on an arbitrary tailboard. This x here is just any smooth project if you fold x. Then in the classical notion of a slope stability, uh, we just look at degree over rank. So and define slope of E to be just degree over rank if the rank is non-zero and it's past infinity if the rank is equal to zero. Okay. Then we say that a coherent sheep is mu H stable if the slope of all sub object of uh, sub sheaves of E is lower than the slope of E itself. 
Then corresponding to mu H stability, there exists a unique Harden Arismat filtration for any shift E that I denote by mu H plus of E and mu H minus of E, the maximum and the minimum slope in this Harden Arismat filtration. Okay. I denote by dx the bounded drive category of coherent shifts on X. What I'm going to explain now is precisely the idea of Tom Bridgeland to construct Bridgeland stability conditions on K3 surfaces. But in the case of three folds, we only get weak stability conditions. So we start with a uh, real number B, and we just replace the category of coherent shifts that we consider in the Cascon notion of slope stability by tilt with respect to a torsion pair. So, and obtain another abelian subcategory, which is the heart of the bounded structure of our triangulated category, and it consists of two term complexes. Such that mu h plus of kernel of d is smaller than or equal to b, and mu h minus of cool kernel of d is bigger than b. Okay. Then for any real number w bigger than b square over 2, we can define the notion of a slope. It's quite similar to the mu h slope of e. It's just, again, degree over rank. It's just chain 2 of e dot h minus w chain 3 of e over chain 1 b h of e, where chain b h of e is just defined as the cup product of chain of e with e twisting by minus b h. So if you just look at definition of the heart here, you see that this number here, chain 1 b h of e, which is just chain 1 dot h square minus b chain 0 of e, is always a non-negative non number. That's why it behaves like rank here, okay? And the top sentence here is just like degree. So we can define an object in the drive category is new beyond W semi-stable if and only if a shift of E lies in our heart AB. And for all non-trivial quotients of this shifted uh, shift by k of e, uh, the new bw slope of these quotients are bigger or bigger than equal uh, or equal to uh, slope of uh, um, new b slope of uh, ek. Okay. Now, if I fixed an object e in in the drive category, then um, I can vary the point b and w in this upper half plane. Uh, sorry, in the in this open sub, uh, subset above this parabola uh, of w equal to b square over two. So corresponding to every point beyond w on this open subset, I have a, a notion of new b and w stability. But the key point here is that uh, this new b uh, b and w stability is continuously changing. In other words, there are locally finite set of all on this open subset such that when I'm moving along each of this chamber, new B and W stability of E is not changing. So if E is stable here, it remains stable along all of this chamber. But as soon as I cross each of these wall, it's just switch from stability to instability or vice versa. This phenomenon is called wall crossing. Okay. Uh, then to construct a stability conditions, you know, bridge line stability conditions on three folds, we need a kind of Bogomolov type inequality for new B and W stable objects. And this is precisely the conjecture of Bayer, Macri, and Toda. They said that, uh, you know, they conjecture that for any new B and W semi-stable object in the heart, which satisfy this condition for the chain character, then we can control chain three of this new semi-stable object from the above. Okay, so if we prove this conjecture, then then you know then we, then it's quite straightforward to just just show that there exists a Bridgeland stability conditions on our table. That's why this is the key step to prove the uh, existence of Bridgeland stability conditions. But to prove the theorem in the theorem that I mentioned, we, we do not need this strong version of uh, bogomov gisiker inequality. We just need a weakening version, which is just bogomov gisiker inequality for two special characters. We only need that the BG conjecture holds for objects of character Vn and specific values of V, and also for torsion-free shifts 
of rank one and a specific churn one and churn two in very specific points of B and W. Okay, that's why probably proving of this breaking BMT conjecture is much easier than the general version. And this is precisely what we need to prove uh, the main theory that I mentioned. Okay. This BMT conjecture, in particular, its uh, weakening has been proved in lots of examples, including the projective space P3, the quartic threefold, or more generally, any final threefold of Picard's rank one. And also for any abelian threefold, uh, a caveat threefold of abelian type, a Kummer threefold, or a product of an abelian variety and PN. And also it's proved for Three folds with NEF tangent bundle, and finally, in a uh, quite recent, in a recent by, by Trini, it's just proved that for a quintic three folds. And in a much more recent work with Kosicki, it's just proved for other examples of clavial three folds. Okay, now I want to just explain how we can use the notion of uh, bridge, uh, weak stability conditions and wall causing to prove the theorem that I mentioned. So we start with a slope semi-stable sheet of chain character Bn. When I say it's a slope semi-stable, just I mean that all non-trivial subsheets of S has a slope and since it's of rank zero, the slope is just chain two over chain one. For all non-trivial subsheets, chain two over chain one of a prime is lower than or equal to the Chain two over chain one of F itself. Okay. The key claim to prove the theorem is the following. If I start with any slope semi-stable sheet of chain character Vn, then the first claim is that it is slope stable. So it cannot be strictly semi-stable. And there exists a unique pair I, S, and L here. Whereas before, I and S is a Joyce-Song pair, where I is a torsion-free sheet of chain character V, and S is a non-zero section, and L here is a line bundle with a torsion C1. Then the claim is that any slow semi-stable sheet of chain character V is isomorphic to, to the co-kernel of a Joyce-Song pair tensoring by a line bundle with torsion C1. This is precisely what I'm going to prove now. So to prove this result, we start in the large room limit. In the large room limit, we know that any rank zero sheaf is a slope semi-stable if and only if it is new B and W semi-stable for any B in R and W large enough. So since our sheaf is a slope semi-stable, it is new B and W semi-stable for W very large. The next step is that we move down this line vehicle to B0 for a very specific choice B0 here, which is minus N over two minus beta H N H Q. Okay, so let me go to the next figure that I explained here. So we start here in the large worm limit when W is very large, and we know that my object, my shift, which is a slope a semi stable is new B and W semi stable here. Then I move down this line B equal to B0. When I move down here, of course, the notion of stability is gradually changing. The first claim is that all of the walls for, for my fixed object F are just parallel lines. And these lines all have a slope B0, the same B0 here. That's why this vertical line intersect all walls, all possible walls for F. Okay, that's why this is a very good choice uh, of this uh, line. Okay, now when we move down here, what's going on? Is it, uh, you know, the first thing is that do we really hit a wall or it is possible that my object remain stable up to the end when W gets very low. But the first thing is that if we apply the bogomolov gisuker inequality, the part one case, it just shows that there is a point WF here, such that the, the sheaf F cannot be stable below this point, okay? That's why there is a point W0 above, above WF, such that my object gets 
fair system lies. And there is a wall for F which uh, intersect this vertical line. Okay, this is precisely the application of the bogomov gisikar inequality for my shifts of character Vn. But the next step is that we start to uh, examine the destabilizing factors along the wall. One of the key points here is that when I'm moving along this wall L for the shift F, the destabilizing object remain in the heart and remain of the same slope as my, uh, my shift F. That's why I can control their, uh, their chain characters and show that the wall for F lies below the wall that twisting of a structure shift is making. So the wall L lies below this red line. Let me summarize what I've explained here. So the wall that bounds the large ram limit chamber for F has a slope B0 and passes through the point B0 omega zero, the W0. And we know that this W0 lies between WF and this number, which is precisely the point on this red line. Okay, so that's the W0 lies between this omega f and this number. Then on this wall, there is a destabilizing sequence f1, f, and f2 in the heart AB0. We know that f2 is a two term complex and, it, and has cohomology in degree 0 and degree minus 1. And the shift in the cohomology in degree 0 has a support uh, in dimension less than 1. And F1 is a rank one portion free shift. Okay. And we can control what is precisely churn one of F1 uh, dot H square and bound churn two of F1 dot H. Okay. Now the next step is um, is, is to understand what 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 this bound for churn two of F1 dot H is. Is means. So the first point is that if this beta h is negative, then, uh, then we reach a contradiction here. That's why if beta h is small than zero, then there isn't such slope semi-stable shift f of character Vn. And so this moduli space is empty. On the other hand, we know that this moduli space I am x beta and this moduli joy sign pair is also empty when beta that h is small than zero. So this just proves the theorem directly in this case. That's why we can um, assume from now on that beta h is bigger than or equal to zero. Okay. Now, um, now if I can control chain one of f1 dot h and chain two of the f1. Um, and similarly, since we know that Chern, chern i of f1 plus chern i of f2 is equal to the chern character of f, we can similarly control the chern character of f2. So the remaining part is to control chern 3 of f1 and f2. And that's exactly the point that we want to apply uh, bogomov gisiker inequality, the conjectural bogomov gisiker inequality for this object. Okay, so we know that both these two shifts are stable here at this point B0 and W0. So we can directly apply the bogomol gisuker inequality at this point. But unfortunately, it doesn't give us a very nice bound for chain three of the destabilizing object. That's why the idea is that we move a little bit below this wall, okay? So the, so the, the claim is that since, since the chain character of the dispersed stabilizing uh, object F1 is very special, it's of rank one and chain one of this uh, F1, you know, I, I put it like general lemma like E here, dot H square is equal to zero. So we can, uh, we can just move along another vertical line, which is the vertical line B prime equal to minus one over H3, okay? The key lemma is that if my if I start with any object in in this part with this fixed rank and this fixed chain one and it is semi-stable for some w bigger some w bigger than b prime square over two in other words b prime and w is in the open subset u that I've explained 
then it is new b prime w stable for all w bigger than b prime square over two. Okay, so if you look at this figure here, you know b prime lies here. You know we know that this b one is bigger than minus one over two h three. That's why the line b prime looks is lies here. I, I didn't put it because I didn't want to just make the figure quite messy. That's why, uh, so, so we know that the point, F, the, the object F1 is a stable here. That's why we can move along this vertical line B equal to B prime and go to W uh, at, at the boundary. So we just consider the limit of this lemma and then apply the Bogomov Gisica inequality and find a very nice bound for turn three of F1. But we can apply a similar argument for, for F2 uh, tasting by N. Now, if you just consider this object, then its character is quite similar to the object F1. That's why we can apply the same argument to be able to control chain three of F, uh, F2 tasting by N. Okay. Uh, now, if we look at these two propositions, we can see that if n goes very large, then these two comp composition uh, uh, of these two proposition is possible only if chain two of f1 dot h is precisely minus beta h. Okay, that's why we can obtain precisely what is the chain two class or uh, character of the disabilizing object f1, and then we can apply holding the theorem to find precisely what is chain one of the degree minus one cohomology of F2. Then the next step is to show that H minus one of F2 must be a line bundle and the degree zero cohomology of F2, H zero of F2 must, be, uh, must vanish. That's why F2 is just the shift of a line bundle. And if you look at the character F1 here, as I explained before, this F1 is a torsion free sheet, okay? So the destabilizing sequence looks like this sequence that I wrote here. It's just the first object is a torsion free sheaf um, of character V. So it lies in a moduli space that I first uh, described. And this line bundle he, uh, here is a, is a line bundle with torsion C1. Therefore, if we look at uh, the F tensoring bit L jaw, we can see that F is precisely the co-kernel of this uh, joy song pair. Okay, so this proves the first part of uh, the claim that which shows that for any shift F, uh, for any slope semi-stable shift F of chain character V, there exists a joy song pair such that this shift is precisely its co-kernel. Now the next step is that we move a little bit below the line L, the, the wall for F. Then it's easy to show that this sequence is the harder Nyssman filtration of F. And then the uniqueness of the harder Nyssman filtration give us directly the, uh, the uniqueness of this joyce sound pair and the uniqueness of this sequence for, for my slope semi-stable shift F. And then it's a kind of usual work crossing argument to show that uh, my shift F must be slope stable and it cannot be strictly semi-stable. Okay, so now I want to, uh, fortunately I have much more time that I imagined at the beginning. So I have, uh, uh, I, I want to talk about the modularity from, um, uh, 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 duality point of view in physics. So I just come back again to the case of uh, Clavier threefold, and so again the canonical bond is trivial. And for simplicity, I assume that H one of O X vanishes, and uh, it uh, this integral cohomology has no torsion. Okay. Then it's expected in physics that uh, omega Vn, which is just the counting of uh, uh, sim, uh, count, count, counting of stable shifts of character Vn, uh, have modular properties. But the key questions here is that what is precisely the notion of stability that we need to consider for 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 charge Vn? 
I think it was at the beginning expected to that we need to consider the notion of key secure stability, but but currently, but currently, I think the expectation is that we need to modify the notion of key secure stability to a new notion of large volume attractor point. Okay. So if we just work on what is precisely the center charge for this large volume attractor point, we can see that um, the slope function for this center charge is precisely this slope here. But in, in, in our argument, we always allow n goes to infinity. That's why, that's why this, it seems that this second sentence is not very important when n goes to infinity and this slope just tends to the slope of a prime. But you know, the main key point is that when we are changing n, the sub um, objects f prime is also changing. But we prove that when, when n is very large, uh, there are not strictly semi-stable shifts uh, uh, of character Vn and all of them are uh, stable. That's why probably we can perturb a little bit the slope. That's why maybe uh, this uh, large volume attractor point when n is very large coincides with the notion of uh, slope stability that we consider here. Anyway, if we, can, you know, if we consider slope stability or large volume attractor point stability, you know, this notion of stability is our, uh, our invariant under uh, uh, on, uh, are preserved by tensoring by, by, by line model. So omega of Vn, uh, this counting of this character is equal to uh, omega of the cup product of um, uh, e of, uh, for, for any line model uh, with uh, Vn, okay? So, but uh, we know that um, these two objects, uh, these these two Vn and e to power of L, uh, this cup product, both have the same uh, uh, H2 class and H, uh, but the H4 class uh, are different uh, by, by the extra factor NHL, okay? But this invariance too uh, show that you know, the whole of the data of all invariance omega Vn uh, for all values of beta and m, uh, but for fixed uh, n large enough can be captured in the smaller set of invariance omega zero and h chern two chern three, uh, where chern two plus n square h square where two varies in a, a finite group gamma. You know, we can easily show, you know, this is by the hard, hard Lutcher's theorem that this group is finite. Okay. That's why all, all the enumerative information can be encoded in the vector of this uh, generating series, H uh, and H of beta of Q, uh, when, um, when uh, for, for each values of beta in this finite group gamma, uh, we have uh, we need to just consider this series where m, m, m hat is is just a suitable normalization of chain three, which is uh, which is invariant under under the action of taking cup product with uh, e to the power of f. And uh, finally, the current expectation is that, uh, you know, I, I think at the beginning, the expectation was that we have a vector valued modular forms, uh, but um, I think it's now expected that we have such kind of result only for the case that the uh, chain one <coughs> is primitive, but since we always look at, look at an edge when n is very large, it's very far from our case, I think uh, the current expectation is that uh, this tray is a vector valued mock modular form. Okay, um, I think I'm uh, done. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sanhila. That was a very nice talk. I'm going to unmute everyone and invite them to give you a round of applause. Are there any questions?
Um, so it seems there are. Sorry, carry on. Uh, so, so. Um, so, is there any question in the in the chat room? There are no questions in the chat, and I'm looking for people with raised hands, but there aren't any at the moment. Okay, well, uh, if anyone has a question, I guess they can ask you during the break. Yeah, sure. uh, if not, thank you very much again, and we will break until the next talk. Okay, great. Thank you very much.